Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at all the chart options that are available to us in Visual Composer. We're going to take a look at how we can use them, the different effects we can apply to them, and how we can configure the way they look and the way they operate. So let's see how we can do all that. So I've got my new page already open. I've got an instance of Visual Composer switched on, and all I need to do now is choose the elements that I want to work with. So we click on Add Element like we've done before. You can see we have a range of four different chart options. We've got a progress bar, a pie chart, a round chart, and a line chart. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. We'll take a look at the settings, how you can use them, and how you can alter the way they look and operate. So we start off with the progress bar. So as this name suggests, the progress bar allows us to have multiple different bars on there showing the progress of whatever we want to sort of visualize. So you can see when we open it up, the instance of it, we've got three uh, values already set for us. We've got the design options that we're used to seeing by now, where we can adjust the margins and padding and so on, and any of the styling. And we've got very, very simple options available to us. We can give the widget a title. We've got the values we're working with. We can specify what the units of measurement are going to be used and the color scheme that's going to be used with it. We can also add in an extra class name if we want to style this independently using CSS. And we've got a couple of other options available to add stripes or add animation. So we'll leave the default values in there to start off with. We'll specify units and we'll just say days. We'll change it to red and we'll just say add animation. So some basic values in there. Hit the save changes and update our page. And then we'll switch over to our live preview and just refresh the page. And as you can see, we've now got a visual representation of our three lots of va uh, values, development, design, and marketing. So if we switch back over, we can come in and edit any of these values. So you can see we can adjust these by repositioning them. We can edit the label, we can edit the value, and we can change the color. So if we just expand that, you can see all the options are available to us. We can say, well, we don't want these to be all the same color, so we'll go for a blue on this although it looks more like green to me. We'll expand the design option and we'll change that to be mulled wine. And we'll do the same for the final option and we'll say we'll have that as classic gray. We'll also take off the animation and switch stripes on. There's a little note here saying that visible only when striped with stripe bar. So let's just say Save the changes, update our page, switch back over to our front end, and refresh the page to see the changes. And there we go. We've now got diagonally striped lines, we've got different colors, all quick and easy, just using the available options under the progress bar widget. So let's move on to the next available chart, which is the pie chart. So we expand that. Here we see we've got a range of different options this time. We've still got the design options available to us should we want to configure that. We've now got very simplistic options. All this pie chart, and in reality, is not really a pie chart. It's just uh, a progress chart would be a better way of saying it from doing nothing right the way to 100% completed. So you can see we can enter the value. This is how far we are to complete in whatever we're talking about. So you can say zero, we haven't started it, 100% is being complete. We leave the value of 50 in there. The label value, we'll just say widget. And the unit is percentage. Now obviously you can use whatever unit you want. I'm just doing this as an example. And we'll say we want this to be, we'll go for blue. Again, we've got the extra class name, should we want to target this with our own custom CSS? But other than that, that really is all the options available to us. It's a very simplistic um, widget. So we'll save that, update our page, and then we'll switch over to our live demonstration site, refresh, and we'll see that take effect. So there we go. You can see now we are at 50%, our widget, percentage, all the information we've given it in there. We switch back again we can just come in we can edit that we can do whatever alterations we want we can take out 
the label, change the color, save our changes, update it, switch back over to the demo page, and refresh that, and see the changes. So there we go. All pretty straightforward. The next chart we have available to us offers us a lot more options. We've now got a round chart, so we can do a pie or a um, donut chart. Again, we can give it a title. We've also got design options available to us. We can choose a style. We've got flat, modern, and custom. We can specify the gap in between each of the segments. We can even specify what that outline color is going to be. So you can match that in with the background of the, ba the page that you're working on, or you can just get creative. We can show or not show the legend on there, and we can also show hover values. And then you can see below that, we've now got the values we're going to work with. And underneath that, we've got the type of animation we want. Again, as with everything else, we've got the extra class name where we can target this with our own CSS. We can reorder these different values, should we see fit. We can expand those and we can see the different values available to us and we can tweak the values, the titles, the colors. We can copy those so we can just duplicate those and make the adjustments we want. But for now, let's just take a look at what this looks like on the page. So we hit save changes, update, switch over to the live site and we'll just refresh the page. And there's our chart. So let's just jump back in and take a look at how we can make changes to that. So we'll just come in and edit this round chart instance. We'll change it from a pie to a donut. We'll change it from flat to modern. We'll increase the gap. And we'll choose a different color. And we'll just duplicate one of these so we can have a, a third value in this. We'll just copy that. And we'll make some changes to that. So we'll just call that three. Set the value to a random figure. And we'll change the color to Chino. So we now have three different values. We'll just reorder that. So one is, as you'd expect it to be, above two. Hit save changes and update the page. Switch back over to the live site. And we'll take a look again at the differences now with this donut chart. So there we go. So that's the donut chart. So let's just switch back over. Let's get rid of these other ones. We don't need those anymore. And we'll take a look at the final chart option we have available to us. So we've now got line chart. Now this, out of all of them, is the most complicated. It's not difficult to use. It just takes a little bit of time to make sure you put the values in correctly and you understand what's going on. So let's just open that up and take a look at what options are available to us in this particular line chart. Now a line chart is slightly different to the first three we've taken a look at. A line chart has a horizontal and a vertical set of values. So your horizontal is gonna be your X axis values and your vertical are going to be the actual values of your chart itself. So you can see the X axis in this particular instance is going through from January through to August. And if we expand one of these values, you can see we now have a title the values that are relevant to it and the color that's going to be used to compare the different column values. So if we take a look at these, it's a pretty straightforward way of working. You separate every value with a semicolon and put a space after it. So you can see we have eight values in there. And if we expand title two, we've got eight values in there. So we'll leave everything set as it is and we'll save this and take a look at what it looks like on the page and then we'll come back in and adjust some of those values and create our own third set of values to compare to. So switch back over and refresh the page. And there's our pie chart, that's it, our bar chart. So you can see there are all our values at the bottom, January through to August, and there's our comparative values on the x-axis from 0 to 40, and we've also got the legend on the right-hand side to tell us what each of these colors actually represents. And if we mouse over, you can see it'll actually give us the values in a pop-up so we can see exactly what value any of these instances is actually displaying. So if we switch back over and come in and edit our chart, we'll put a third column in there and see how that actually looks. 
So what I can do is to make this easy, again, is we just duplicate the second one. We'll rename this three, and we'll just update the values to some ones that I've already stored. Like I say, the important fact here is to ensure that all of your values are separated by that semicolon. We'll change the color out to something completely different. We'll go for gray. And we'll shut that down. We'll change the animation to elastic. And we'll say, I don't want to show a legend on this one. And we'll change the value to modern. We can also change the type of chart that we're working with. So we can have a line chart or a bar chart. Now I'll leave it at bar chart for this example, but we'll come back in later and switch it over so you can see the differences between the two. So I'll hit the save changes on there and update our page. Again, we'll switch back over to the demonstration page, refresh that, and we should now see that we have the extra set of values inserted in there and all the alterations we've added in have changed. It's a different animation. We've got rid of the legend on the right hand side. We still have the pop-up legend when we take our mouse over it and you can see now the value on the left hand side our x-axis because we've increased these values that's automatically increased for us so it's not something you've got to do manually it will automatically do it so let's switch back over come back in and edit this instance and we'll switch this over now to a line chart and we'll say we put the legend back on and we'll just come in and change some of the values on this so where we've got some of the higher values we'll just adjust those just so you can see how this affects the actual x-axis values. So we'll switch back over to our demonstration page, refresh, and we'll see what this does. So now you can see we've got a line chart. Our values have updated on the left-hand side, so our x-axis has changed. Our legend is back, and now with the three separate different color values, the gray, the red, and the blue, and everything is displaying as you'd expect it to. So that really is all there is to the different options we've got available to us to display charts using Visual Composer and WordPress. It gives you quite a good scope to visually demonstrate data, and obviously you've got some different options there available to you to choose the right kind of chart to display the data in the way that you want it displayed. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the like button to give it a thumbs up if you thought the video was good. Any comments or suggestions or feedback, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post on there and we try to help out when we can. So until next time, take care.